folks, this is Chad Perkins from MoviesAndComputers.com. So how many times have you recorded video and noticed in post that your audio was too quiet? But then when you try to make it louder by just raising the volume, you realize that it also increases the volume of the noise in the background. Well, in this tutorial, we're going to use Adobe Premiere's powerful audio tools to boost audio intelligently. We'll remove some noise. We'll also look at an effect called high pass. And finally, we'll explain something called audio compression, what it is and why even people that just work in video need to know about it. Now, first, let's show you the before clip. This is the clip we're going to be working with. This is a clip of my children from a short film I did called Monday the 16th. Here's the clip. You just want to play with you, Daddy. Okay, super adorable. Uh, but it's a little quiet. As we see, the uh, meters over here on the right are going to about negative 18, which is not quite enough. And so if I grab this bar and raise these levels and then play this back. You just want to play with you, Daddy. We can see that it definitely has boosted the signal, but it's also boosted that terrible noise. So here is the uh, final version here. You just want to play with you, Daddy. So it's much louder. There's some garbage before and after as a result of the effects that we added. But those kind of things are really easy to take out in editing. The real challenge is getting that dialogue to sound good. So let's go over to boosting audio start. The first thing we're going to do is actually undo that volume change. And I'm going to uh, apply an effect. I'm going to go to audio effects in the effects panel. Open up stereo. And I want to apply an effect called denoiser, which does exactly what it says it sounds like it does. Uh, it removes noise. So I'm going to apply that, just drag and drop that to the audio portion of the clip here. And then in the effect controls panel up here, I'm going to open the denoiser uh, parameters so I can play with it a little bit. I'm going to open uh, custom setup here and we have a little uh, display. And these type of effects, as a matter of fact, most of these audio effects that have this kind of display under custom setup, sometimes it can be hard to see. So if you have the extended uh, timeline view in the effect controls panel, and maybe um, you have this window resized like that, you won't be able to see it. It doesn't unfortunately scale at all. So you kind of need to open things up a little bit. Make sure you have enough room to see what's going on. So the denoiser actually analyzes the footage. As, as I scrub through this, you can see that it's kind of given us a wavelength of the noise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab re the reduction and I'm going to drag this down. This reduces the noise in the clip. I'll take this down to about negative 17 or so. Pretty hardcore. Let's play this back now. Daddy. Okay, a little better. And I want to actually increase the offset a little bit up to about 10. One more time, let's play it back. I just want to play with you, Daddy. Okay, good. It's a lot better, but there is this like low frequency hum here. And I hope that comes across uh, in the, uh, the video here, but trust me, it's there. And so what we're going to do to get rid of that is we're going to apply an effect called high pass. Now high pass is for when you want to let high frequencies pass through, hence the name. So if you have like a low frequency hum, you know, like oftentimes uh, when you're recording, you don't catch that there's a fan on in the background or other type of uh, like, like low rumble in the background, high pass is really good for that. Likewise, if you have some kind of like shrieking, um, then you could use the low pass filter to get rid of that so only low frequencies pass through. So I'm going to apply high pass, drag and drop that on, open high pass, and I'm going to change the cutoff from uh, 1495 uh, hertz, uh, which is actually pretty high, uh, to 200. And so that's, uh, that changes this, so it's pretty low. And it's not going to affect our dialogue very much, but it's going to get rid of the low hum that's there. Let's listen to that. Daddy. Pretty good. So let's uh, hit this little effects icon for the denoiser and the high pass and hear it without those. We can see the before and the after. I just want to play with you, Daddy. So you can see the, the, the dialogue is really buried in that noise. So then we remove the noise, which leaves the low frequency hum. Then we use high pass to remove the low frequency hum, and we have this. I just want to play with you, Daddy. 
Okay, so now we have a good signal. We just need to make it louder. And again, we could go here to volume and boost this, but there's a smarter way to do it with something called audio compression. Now, to explain this, I'm gonna go over to sound booth here. Um, but don't worry about that. I just want to explain the concept of compression. So this is what an audio waveform looks like. And we have these uh, spikes here. We have these valleys. And a lot of times these things in these valleys, this is what you want to hear. But then occasionally we have these loud points. Well, if we go and we boost the audio signal, you can see that it's not very long before these little spikes make it so that we get distortion and it kind of blows things out and sounds terrible. I'm just gonna go ahead and undo that there. But what compression does is that it rounds out these peaks so then you could boost everything up. Compression is used all over the place in professional audio recording. Uh, there's probably not ever been a song on the radio in the last 10, 20 years that has not had a significant amount of compression applied to almost every single instrument uh, to it. So this is a very common audio trick to be able to boost audio and make levels stronger. So I'm going to go back over to here to Premiere. And there isn't really a compression effect, but there are two effects that do compression. One is multiband compressor. So if you want to compress high frequencies, mid frequencies, and low frequencies separately, you could use that. But I find the real powerhouse here is in the dynamics effect, especially if you're new to audio, this is a much better tool to use. So I'm going to open this up here. And so here we have uh, all the stuff in the dynamics effect. There's actually a gate which can actually uh, close down and so it doesn't let uh, certain audio levels uh, go through unless it's loud enough. So if there's like a noisy recording, you could make it so that uh, anytime someone's not speaking, it makes it so it's completely silent. It's typically a pretty harsh effect though, so I'm going to avoid that for right now. Uh, we also have this compressor and that's what we're going to focus on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the threshold. This basically determines when the compression is going to kick in. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to take this down to about negative 22 decibels or so. So that means when it just gets up a little bit, it's going to start compressing the signal and making it a little bit louder. And I'll explain uh, how that works in just a second. The ratio is how much compression is going to be applied. And this is always the ratio is this much to one. So I'm going to take this up to four, which basically means that for every four decibels, that our volume gets over negative 22 decibels, it's gonna compress from four decibels to only one decibel. Attack and release deal with how fast the compression starts and how slow it releases. I'm actually gonna take the attack time down to like 0.1, something very small here. And finally, this last parameter, which is very important, is the makeup gain. And this is kind of like a volume control. Once you've uh, cropped off the super high peaks of the audio waveform, then the makeup value allows you to boost the entire signal. So I'm going to take this back up to, or not back up to, just take it up to about 12. And now we could hear the final results of all of our fiddling. I just want to play with you, Daddy. So we have a very strong signal. Uh, we might want to tweak it. Her voice does sound a little artificial, so uh, I kind of uh, went extra heavy-handed on these effects just so that uh, as I compress this tutorial and put it on the web, you'd still be able to tell that there was a difference. Um, but in a movie setting, you've got to be a little bit more careful with the audio. So I'd probably take the ratio down uh, just a little bit, and I'd probably be a little bit lighter with the denoiser and the high pass. But all the same, the, the, the frequency does sound much better than if we were to go in and increase the volume and increase that really loud, noisy uh, noise <laughs> that was in the background. So what have we learned? We've learned about removing noise. We've learned about removing low frequency hums. And we've learned the benefits of compressing audio signals in order to maximize sound levels. So that is the tutorial for today. If you'd like to donate $1 for all this incredibly useful information, then follow the link in the description of this video or head to moviesandcomputers.com. And of course, if you like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube. You could like us on Facebook and visit moviesandcomputers.com to request tutorials, to talk with us in the forums and more. I love you so much for watching this. <laughs> Have a great day. Until next time, my friends.